Okay, we are going uh, to start today the next fat soluble vitamin that is the last fat soluble vitamin in the list that is vitamin K. Vitamin K is not only a single vitamin but it is a group of vitamin which are uh, from the natural sources as well as from synthetic sources. This is the only fat soluble vitamin which is acting as a coenzyme in different reactions in the body. This is the only fat soluble vitamin which is acting as a coenzyme. Up to now we have studied vitamin E, A, D, but all these are acting from different physiological functions related with the organ. But this vitamin is acting as a coenzyme just like B complexes, where the B complexes are mainly important and they are involved in the metabolic reaction by acting as coenzymes. It is essential for blood clotting procedure and blood clotting factor. It is important for blood clotting factor and for coagulation, for coagulation. This vitamin was first time discovered by a Swedish scientist who gave the name and that was the spread starting with the alphabet K, coagulation. Okay? It was first discovered by a Swedish scientist who gave the name coagulation and that word is start with the alphabet K rather C. Okay? Later on we are using nowadays coagulation by the simple uh, UK matter English. Okay? Now come to the types of vitamin K. I said in the beginning that it is a group of vitamin. It is not only a single vitamin but there are different types of vitamin K starting from K1 till K7. But the important forms are three. K1, K2 and K3. And this distribution is basically uh, based upon the occurrence of vitamin K1, K2 and K3. K1 which is also known as phylloquinone. The rate structure in this is known as quinone. Okay? So the K1 which is known as phylloquinone, it is basically taken from green leafy vegetables. Means it is plant origin. K1 is plant origin. Some of the fruits like avocado, it is rich in vitamin K1. The second type and second form of vitamin K is K2. K2, which is also known as menaculon. It is considered as the animal source, but basically this is synthesized by the clonal bacteria. This is synthesized by the clonal bacteria. It can also be taken on found in chicken meats as well as cheese. It is also found in fermented, it is also found in fermented soybean. The third type is K3 remembered as menadiol. Menadiol. It is a synthetic analog of vitamin K. It is a synthetic analog of vitamin K. which may be menadione sodium bisulfate and menadione nicotinamide bisulfate which may be menadione sodium bisulfate and menadione nicotinamide bisulfate so these three forms are important the last one is synthetic and another important thing about the last one it is a water soluble ingredient too it is a water soluble ingredient too the best sources of vitamin K in plant 
including spinach, cabbage, cauliflower, and other leafy green vegetables. Leafy green vegetables. While the least effective sources could be tomatoes, cheese, liver, and egg yolk. Tomatoes, cheese, liver, and egg yolk. The gram positive intestinal bacteria produces large amount of K2. The name of mana, uh, K2 is? Menachinol. Menachinol. Okay. So large amount is synthesized in or with the help of intestinal bacteria. All three types of vitamin K, K1, K2, K3 are naphthalene derivatives. If we talk about chemistry of this vitamin, these are the derivative of naphthalene, which are containing a side chain which is known as isoprenoid unit. Isoprenoid unit. And it is, I already told you that all these are fat soluble except K3 which is a synthetic form and it is soluble in water too. I have given in the slide a complete picture or chemical structure of all the three important forms you can see once you will receive the presentation. Now come to absorption distribution. The lymphatic system is the major root of vitamin K absorption. Phylloquinone is absorbed by an energy dependent process from small intestine, particularly duodenum. Okay. Phylloquinone is absorbed, we are discussing absorption and distribution of vitamin K and I am letting you know that phylloquinone which is a plant source vitamin K or K1 type it is absorbed by an energy dependent process from a small intestine particularly duodenum while menaquinone is absorbed from a small intestine but in ileum and colon by by a passive non-carrier mediated process or in other term we can use passive diffusion K2 is absorbed by a passive diffusion means for a special uh, uh, required energy dependent molecule ya wo facilitated diffusion nahi chahiye hoga balki wo aaram se absorb ho jata hai ठीक है जैसे हम लोगों ने वाटरमेन बी में पढ़ा था वाटरमेन ए में पढ़ा था बड़े कॉम्प्लेक्स मैकेनिज्म से वाटरमेन बी जो है पढ़ेंगे तो उसमें देखिएगा वो तो है ही पूरा डिपेंड ही करता है पूरा का पूरा मेटाबॉलिज्म पे और कुछ वन जैसे ही जैसे जीआईटी की क्वालिटी को एनहांस करते हैं या फिर पीपीआईज हैं प्रोटॉन पंप इनहिबिटर्स जो के एसिडिटी के लिए यूज किए जाते हैं तो वो इसकी डाइफ्यूजनसी भी कॉज कर रहे होते हैं वाटरमेन बी जो है क्योंकि बहुत सारे एंटीसिड जो कि एसिड एसिडिटी रिक्वायर होती है वाटरमेन बी ज्वाइन को एब्जॉर्प्शन के लिए क्योंकि एक्सटेंसिव फैक्टर और फिर इंटेंसिव फैक्टर दो अलग-अलग चीजें चाहिए अगर हम नेचुरल फॉर्म में ले रहे हैं तो फिर उनको तमाम प्रोसेस से गुजरना पड़ेगा और अगर बॉडी के अंदर एसिडिटी नहीं है अगर कोई बंदा एंटीसिड ले रहा है तो बी और सी कैन सफर ड्यू टू बी12 डाइफ्यूजनसी व्हाट आर द बी12 व्हिच इज टेकन फ्रॉम द फूड सोर्स So the next part is important that pharmacists must know that what kind of vitamin can be deficient by using certain medication and what kind of intervention can arise when we are taking a specific type of foods which require acidity and how we can manage the uh, administration of such drugs. Okay? Sometimes uh, the minimum HCL is required to control the GIT lining but we can change the administration and dosage time of those medications which can require or which are required acidity in terms of solubilization or in terms of absorption okay so you will further uh, study in detail about the pharmacology in next uh, next year inshallah 
Okay, come to the distribution that vitamin K is mainly, it is once absorbed, it is mainly present in the liver, heart and pancreas. Vitamin K1 is mainly present in the liver, heart and pancreas. It is incorporated in chylomicron, similar like other fat soluble vitamins and then and then enter into the lymphatic system and transport it through the body. Some amount of vitamin K is stored in liver while some amount is oxidized And some of the amount is re-secreted with a very low dependent that is VLDL lipoprotein. Most or major amount of vitamin K is eliminated in the feces. Most and major amount of vitamin K is eliminated in the feces. In terms of coagulation function of vitamin K, it has a central role. It has a central role in relationship between in relationship between the liver and coagulation system. Liver and the coagulation system because it is required for the functionally active coagulation factor. All the coagulation factors are synthesizing here in the liver and they must be activated with the help of vitamin K and there is a complete chemical process which is required to convert them into active form which we will be discussing in the next slides. Now come to the metabolism. Metabolism of vitamin K mainly occur in the liver and it is rapidly metabolized and eliminated. In the first step, once it is entered and transported into the liver, vitamin K is reduced to quinone. Vitamin K is reduced into quinone with the help of quinone reductase with the help of quinone reductase now important important thing in this is that reduced form of vitamin K is required to activate the activate the vitamin K dependent protein the reduced form of vitamin K is required for the K dependent protein which are converted into active form. The body maintains only 30 to 40 percent of vitamin K. Body maintains in the general circulation about 30 to 40 percent of vitamin K once it is taken by oral root. Once it is taken by oral root. If we are going to give parental root, then 100% is uh, distributed in the body. 100% okay? is circulated and distributed in the body. While if we are going to take oral, then there must be certain metabolic reactions and there is a passage which need to be facilitated the diffusion. So 30 to 40 percent of vitamin K is distributed in the body once it is taken orally while about 20 percent is eliminated or excreted in urine and the remaining percentage is eliminated through the bile. Through the bile. This rapid metabolic reaction helping to minimize the level of vitamin K in the body if it is unnecessarily high.
this rapid metabolic reaction is helping to maintain the level of vitamin A in the circulation. Isn't it? Now come to the main function of vitamin A. It is mainly involved in activation of certain vitamin A dependent protein which I said in the beginning. And these proteins are actually the coagulation proteins. Coagulation proteins and factors. And these coagulation factors which are dependent upon vitamin K availability to be converted and transferred into active form including factor 2 prothrombin, prothrombin, Factor 7, pro-convertin, and the other factor is factor 9 and factor 10. Factor 9 and factor 10. What is the name of factor 9? Yes. Tell me, tell me, is sword factor or Christmas factor? Christmas factor. Christmas factor or sword factor? You have to read the name of the factors in physiology. Yes. Strong factor is factor 10 and Christmas factor or plasma thromboplastin component is factor 9. So the first function of vitamin K is involved in the activation of coagulation factor. The second function it is acting as a coenzyme. It is acting as a coenzyme mainly Mainly for the coagulation process, it is acting as a coenzyme. Mainly for the coagulation, coagulation process, and it is facilitating the mechanism of post-translational modification, post-translational or transcriptional modification of the blood factor, of the blood factors. Yes, post transcriptional or translational modification which is required for the activation of coagulation factor which I already told you that there are uh, different type of factors which are dependent upon the vitamin K availability. So vitamin K is first converted into, now listen carefully this mechanism that how it is playing role. So, there are the drugs which are acting as an anticoagulant, specifically cumarol derivatives and warfarin, which you heard me maybe. So that is acting by using the same mechanism or pathway by which vitamin K is converted into active form and then it is involved to activate the other proteins. Okay? So here which factors are there in body? जो वाटरमेंट के पर डिपेंड कर रहा है ब्लड के अब ये जो फैक्टर्स हैं कोइग्रेशन वाले ये एक्टिवेट होंगे वाटरमेंट के की वजह से और कुछ ड्रग्स जिसको हम एंटी कोइग्रेन फॉर एग्जांपल अगर थ्रोमोएबोलिक डिसऑर्डर है किसी को कार्डियोवेस्कुलर का डिसऑर्डर है या किसी को नैरोइंग ऑफ वेसल का डिसऑर्डर है या को क्लॉट का डिसऑर्डर है तो उस तुरंत में हम एंटी कोइग्रेन का ब्लड थिनर देते हैं जो के ब्लड क्लॉट को मिनिमाइज कर देता है या क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स को डिसेबल कर देता है या आन एबल कर देता है तो वो एक्टिवेटेड फॉर्म में को इग्लेट करें जिनकी बॉडी के अंदर की टेंडेंसी उसकी बहुत फास्ट तो उसका मेकैनिज्म इस मेकैनिज्म को जब आपको बताऊंगी तो उसका मेकैनिज्म सेम वही होता है जो कि वाटरमेंट ए का रोल होता है एक्टिवेट करने का वो उस जगह पे जाके रखते हैं और इस चीज को हम कहते हैं मेकैनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ ट्रांस कि कोई भी ड्रग जो बॉडी के अंदर हम लेके जा रहे हैं वो कौन से प्रोसेस के थ्रू एक्ट करिए 
कुछ तो रिसाप्टर में बाइंड करके अपनी एक्टिविटी शो करती हैं और सिमिलर रिसाप्टर हो गए और यहाँ पर सिमिलर न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर है जो कि सिरोटनिन है मूड एलिवेशन में इन्वॉल्व होता है कभी कभार कोई डिप्रेशन में चला जाता है तो उसको वो भी न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर बट हाईली एक्टिव फॉर्म में दिया जाता है जो कि कॉम्पिटेटिवली बाइंड करता है कॉम्पिटेटिवली थिंग इज कॉम्पिटेशन इज फर्स्ट पोजीशन सेकंड पोजीशन कंपटीशन है तो फर्स्ट पोजीशन वाला जहां पे तक बैठ जाएगा और फिर वो उसी सिग्नल को एक्टिवेट करेगा जो कि डिफरेंट हो गया है एक न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर की वजह से और जिसकी वजह से मूड जो है वो या स्टेट हो गया है या खराब हो गया है या डिप्रेशन की तरफ चला गया तो ये सारे मैकेनिज्म होते हैं सो आई से दैट दिस पार्टमेंट इज एक्टिंग एज ए को एगुलेशन एक्टिवेटर and it is involved in helping a post transitional modification process uh, vitamin k is first converted to hydroquinone in this mechanism vitamin k is first converted into hydroquinone form in the liver in the liver with the help of an enzyme known as dehydrogenase when i use the term dehydrogenase it means it is depending upon the availability of nadh to nadh okay nadh so then it then function as a coenzyme it is now functioning as a coenzyme for the enzyme carboxylase for the enzyme carboxylase which is using carbon dioxide to be incorporated as an additional carboxylic group at the gamma carbon of gamma carbon of a specific glutamate of coagulation protein i'm repeating that what is the function what is it converted into hydroquinone by with the help of the hydrogenase enzyme and then ultimately what it will do it will act as a coenzyme for which enzyme for carboxylase and the main function of carboxylase is to incorporate carbon dioxide as an additional group as an additional group at gamma carbon at gamma carbon of the specific glutamate of the specific glutamate of coagulation protein protein se agar definitely in the sequence ko ki with the help of amino acid to jo glutamate residue hai ye us pe incorporate kar rahi hai carbon dioxide ko mila kar aur carboxylic group usme transfer kar diya ab kis position pe gamma carbon pe so once it is converted the glutamate that is a glu residue usually the both glutamate which is an inactive form is represented by the abbreviation glu residue so it is converting glutamate glu residue into into gamma carboxylase glutamate gla gamma gamma carboxy glutamate residue now the hydroquinone which is synthesized hydroquinone which is synthesized may be changed into 2,3 epoxide 2,3 epoxide and that epoxide is reversible that epoxide which is synthesized is reversible and it can reverse back into reduced form which is the required form of vitamin k i told you in the beginning okay which is the reduced back to quinone with the help of enzyme with the help of enzyme because it's converted into 2,3 epoxide so epoxide reductase epoxide reductase now Now note down that dihydroxyl derivatives, which are known as warfarin and used as an anticoagulant, they act on the enzyme 
epoxide reductase. So they will disallow vitamin K to be converted or to be reduced back to resynthesize and reactivate the coagulation protein. So this is the phenomena by which, by which Wolfram type of anticoagulants are acting. There are other anticoagulants and they are acting by the different mechanisms, but specifically I have mentioned here because this vitamin can be used in case of Wolfram toxicity reactivate the process of coagulation because if excessive volume is taken ultimately what will happen? Excessive loss of blood can occur. Excessive bleeding can occur. So how can we minimize it and how we can control there should be an antidote of it. So vitamin K is the antidote of water that can minimize toxicity. Okay? Several studies have reported several studies have reported that vitamin K supplement can also prevent bone loss in osteoporosis or in postmenopausal women. Several studies show that vitamin K supplementation can help to prevent bone loss in postmenopausal women. Because it slows down osteoclast activity, not blast, osteoclast activity, and it mediates calcium binding with the help of protein. Because several proteins are required to be activated with the help of vitamin K, so it has been reported that certain proteins which are involved into uh, binding of calcium at the surface of bone that is initiated with the help of vitamin K. So this is another function. Uh, in the slide, I have shown a complete picture, a presentation that is explaining the precise mechanism with the help of layout. Once you will proceed, you can find that how vitamin K is activated in, into the reduced form and then it is converted into epoxide and will be Drop boyfriend is active, it is clearly uh, given in that uh, transparency or in that slide. Another function of vitamin K is to reduce the neuronal, neuronal damages. Several studies show that vitamin K at some extent is also acting as an antioxidant. Antioxidant. So hence, this will help to minimize neuronal damage, neuronal damage which is associated with ROS, reactive oxygen species. If you reactive oxygen species, brain ko devastate karti hai, aapke cell walls ko devastate karti hai, aapke organs ko matap karti hai. So in ko minimize karne ke liye, hain antioxidant body mein chahi hoga, glutathione, bhoat achcha antioxidant hai, ko glycogen ko bhi maintain karta, platinum ko pata hona, mujhe pata hai, aap log dekhte nahi dekhte, ki glutathione aaj kal aesthetics jo doctors hain, clinics hain, wo bhoat zara use karate hain for the skin shining and for the wrinkle free skin, aur iske alawa ki uska kaam kya hai, ek melanin ko bhi minimize kar deta hai, usko stimulate hone se. और आपकी स्किन फेयरनेस की तरफ चली जाती है तो इसके दो फॉर्म्स आते हैं ओरल भी आता है और इंजेक्शन भी आता है आपने ना वो चाय वाइज स्टडी दैट द इंजेक्शन फॉर्म इज मोर पावरफुल देन दी ओरल फॉर्म में बस ओरल फॉर्म में ब्लॉक होगी जाएगी इंस्टीट्यूट होगी तो उसका अमाउंट मिनिमम रह जाएगा जबकि इंजेक्शन फॉर्म में जब जाएगा तो वो इमीडिएटली आपने जो रिक्वायर्ड एरिया है उसको जाके टारगेट करेगा और अपना इफेक्ट प्रोड्यूस करेगा बाय एक्टिंग एज एन एंटीऑक्सीडेंट ये सिंपल प्रोमेना होता है और कुछ नहीं होता और जितने भी बॉडी के अंदर प्रॉब्लम आ रहे होते हैं दीज आर एसोसिएटेड विद द रिएक्टिव ऑक्सीजन स्पीशीज व्हिच आर सिंथेसाइजिंग ड्यूरिंग द मेटाबॉलिक प्रोसेस ओके सो वाटर के एक्ट एज एन एंटीऑक्सीडेंट एंड एंड इट कैन मिनिमाइज न्यूरोनल डैमेजेस फॉर एग्जांपल इट इज हेल्पफुल इट इज हेल्पफुल इफ इट इज सप्लीमेंटेड टू द अल्जाइमर पेशेंट्स it is helpful if it is given to the Alzheimer patients as a supplement. And the last function is that it is acting as it is acting as to D 
detoxify warfarin cases which I have only told you. Warfarin is an artificial analog. Warfarin is an artificial analog and vitamin K is used to treat the high doses of high doses of warfarin. Treat the high doses of warfarin. 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 So if we talk about the physiological role, the physiological role are the same which we have discussed in the function that it is controlling coagulation, it is activating coagulation process. It is activating coagulation process by accelerating the GLU residue conversion into GLA residue by post-translational modification. Post-translational modification. It also acts, the second function, physiological role and functions are the same. Physiological role is that it is also involved in the binding of calcium binding protein in the bones. And the third role is oxidative phosphorylation. Therefore, we are using it as an antioxidant too for the control of neural damage specifically. And I give you example of Alzheimer's problem or Alzheimer's disease. Now come to the daily recommended allowance. As I said, those vitamins which are synthesizing in the body, their daily recommended allowance are usually not required because they are synthesized and can be absorbed easily from the gut. So vitamin K is one of the important fat soluble vitamin which is synthesizing in the body by the clonal bacteria, gram positive bacteria. Okay? So if the person is taking high uh, antibiotics for the prolonged period of time, uh, then he or she can suffer due to ultimately vitamin K as well as other B complexes which are synthesized by the same bacteria. So it is necessary that your gut performance should be uh, controlled and effective to maintain the level of required coenzymes uh, by the synthesis of these coronal bacteria. Okay? So it is necessary if someone is suffering due to dysentery and diarrhea in which the uh, GIP modality is enhanced and increases ultimately evacuate fast bowel movement. It evacuate by the fast bowel movement. So that may also involve in the minimizing or deficiency of different vitamins. Because that bacteria can also flush down and it is necessary that whatever the problem related with the GIP should be immediately treated. Yeah, if it's not the coffee rose again, the Martam and Maduki Jarjoana from the GIP system. The GIP system of the proper and the Marchi is proper already, it is a GIP system. So, Sara is a system of the internal air, no disturbed. So, usually, really recommended allows me, I mean, I have to say, oh, I can do that. साथ हो रहे हैं उसके बारे में के लिए उनकी जरूरत नहीं पड़ती इतनी ज़्यादा उनकी डाइजेशन जी के चांसेस बहुत रेयर होते हैं क्योंकि बॉडी खुद संतुष्टाइज कर रही होती है उसे but still the recommended allowance for adult women is 122 microgram 122 microgram while for the man it is 138 microgram 138 microgram While if we are taking a food as well as a supplement, then the average daily vitamin K intake increases up to 164 microgram for women. If we are taking both food we live or supplement we live in, usually the amount will plus into 164 microgram in women and 182 microgram in men. Now come to hypervitaminosis. Hypervitaminosis 
or vitamin K toxicity is uncommon is uncommon because the natural form phylloquinone and menaquinone both are both are least toxic both are least toxic or non toxic even at the high doses even at the high doses while the only problem of toxicity or hyperbaronosis arise once the person is taking supplemental form or synthetic form that is vitamin K3 menaquinone so the toxicity or the problem related with the toxicity may arise once it is taken in synthetic form and usually such type of toxicities are seen in formula fed milks which are given to the newborn they are containing synthetic form of vitamin k synthetic form of vitamin k and i think i told you in the beginning that when the newborn came in the world immediately vitamin k injection should be given or one injection should be given to uh, that newborn baby the reason is that the git is completely sterile git is completely sterile is having no any kind of coronal bacteria so there may be chances that once fetus is removed to remove our uh, baby birth is done then it is necessary that immediately vitamin k injection should be given to the newborn to minimize the chances of hemorrhage because body will take certain time to synthesize coronal bacteria and to start taking uh, or participate in the coagulation process by itself okay to usme time lagta hai jab tak nahi hota to immediately aap usse puchhega ये और सब कहते हैं कि इस कैंपी में तो बर्थ हुई हो तो देखते हैं कि कुछ को वाटरमेन के कैंपी अच्छा होता है नहीं उसकी हिस्ट्री में क्या चीज हो रहा है पैदा होने के बाद बात कर रहा है सो हाइपर वाटर का आंसर आई सेड दैट इट इज रियली अप्लाई बिकॉज़ नेचुरल फॉर्म रियली बिकॉज़ इट इज नॉट स्टोर्ड इन द लिवर मेजॉरिटी ऑफ देम एंड दे आर क्विकली मेटाबोलाइज्ड सो दैट दे आर एलिमिनेटेड व्हिच आई टोल्ड यू द बिगनिंग एलिमिनेटेड फ्रॉम द पीसेस एज़ वेल एज़ फ्रॉम द लाइट मीडिया and only 20 to 40% to retain in the circulation so only toxicity will arise once it is taken by or in the synthetic form the most common symptom symptoms which are associated with the toxicity arise in the newborn that is jaundice jaundice and that jaundice can cause a brain damage which is known as which is known as kernicterus k e r k e r n i c t e r u s kernicterus it is a brain damage as well as hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia is observed and once the anemia will arise due to the damage of rbc ultimately hyperbilirubinemia can occur hyperbilirubinemia can occur and such toxicity such toxicity also blocks the effect of effect of oral anti coagulant oral anti coagulant in my slide i have given a picture about the uh, child newborn which is normal and then it is suffering due to jaundice as well as the anemia that is normal blood cells and it is compared with the uh, hemolytic anemia you can see what you will see now come to deficiency deficiency is extremely rare Kernicterus, Kernicterus. Brain damage हो जाता है, myelinated sheets काम हो जाती हैं। अभी जाके आप पढ़िएगा कि Kernicterus brain damage बताया गया है, brain damage हो जाता है। Okay, lack of vitamin K can cause number of diseases, 
नंबर ऑफ डिजीजेस सच एज क्या हो सकता है ब्लड लॉस ब्लीडिंग एंड पुअर बोन डेवलपमेंट पुअर बोन डेवलपमेंट ऑस्टियोप्रोसेस यस न्यूरोनल डैमेज एंड इंक्रीज कार्डियोवेस्कुलर प्रॉब्लम इंक्रीज कार्डियोवेस्कुलर प्रॉब्लम The deficiency of vitamin K is rare in the adult because of food. Because of the food which we eat, usually containing sufficient amount of vitamin K. We have green leafy vegetables. That means that all of us eat. All of us are in our home. Most of the food that we eat is in our body. So, adult side is rare. However, the infant are at the risk of having. Infants are at the risk of having disease concerning the deficiency of vitamin K. Which can be known as which can be known as vitamin K deficiency bleeding. Vitamin K deficiency bleeding. B K D B. B K D B. Deficiency is rare in the adult, but in the children, uh, in the newborn, if it arises, then we call it as vitamin K deficiency bleeding. And more common sign or symptom of deficiency in newborn is the excessive bleeding. Is the excessive bleeding in the area other than cuts and wounds. in the area other than cuts and wounds and this deficiency can be recognized in the baby boy when circumcision is taken place and secondly when umbilical cord is cut down after the birth this deficiency can be seen All of you know the factor which we have discussed several times in the previous classes that usually the factors are the same which are related with the GIP if you are taking by the oral route of administration. So if there is any surgical cut that has removed that particular part of the intestine which is responsible for the absorption of not only vitamin K but other nutritional nutrients too. So they may lead to cause deficiency of nutritional components. So similarly, if the person is taking antibiotic for a prolonged period of time, then he or she can suffer due to due to vitamin K deficiency, and supplementation is required in such case. And if there is biliary tract obstruction, by is the uh, salt. A main ingredient required for the absorption of tract soluble vitamin. So, if there is biliary tract obstruction, that may lead to cause deficiency of. This is one of the factors. Okay, this is one of the factors of deficiency, or we can term it as malabsorption. Malabsorption. Another reason of deficiency is the spoiled sweet clover hay. Spoiled use of spoiled sweet clover hay when it is consumed by cattle. When it is consumed by cattle, causes a bleeding disease. Causing a bleeding disease. In such cases, there is. Fall in oxygen consumption. There is fall in oxygen consumption. So ultimately, there is poor oxidative phosphorylation, which is required, which is required as an antioxidant activity. So there will be low prothrombin, proconvertin, 
and other factors. There will be low prothrombin, proconvertin, and other factors. Because it's quite sweet clover hay contains contain dihumeral vitamin K and tannins. Thank you. 